Howdy and welcome back to Grafted Branch Ministry. As always, Scotty Earp here. But if this is your first time tuning in to Grafted Branch, welcome. This is a channel where I, myself, and my wife, Hannah Earp, we dedicate our lives to studying the King James Bible on various different topics and then presenting the studies here on YouTube and on Rumble. And we dedicate our lives to studying the King James Bible because we believe that it's God's perfect word. We align our lives to every word that be in the King James Bible, living according and submitting unto the word of God, understanding that we are in turn submitting unto to God and his will for us by understanding the word of God. Now, today's study topic, we are refuting some of the other versions and why we stick to a King James Bible and not something like the New King James Bible. Okay, let's go ahead and open up. Go to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 10. Okay, in the New King James Bible, it says divination is on the lips of a king. Divination. Okay, that's not a good thing. That's working sorceries. Is on the lips of a king. His mouth must not transgress in judgment. The, the New King James is more closely related to the Dewey Reims than it is a, a Catholic Bible, the Dewey Reims, than it is to the King James Bible or any other modern version. If we look at the ESV, for an example, it says an oracle is on the lips of a king doesn't talk about divination, still around the same thing being an oracle, but notwithstanding the Dewey Reams Bible from my research has only been, has been the only other one that mentions divination being on the lips or in the lips of a king in this passage in Proverbs 16 verse 10. It's quite shocking that a Catholic Bible has more influence on the new King James Bible than the King James Bible. The King James Okay, here in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 10 says, A divine sentence is in the lips of a king. His mouth transgresses not in judgment. Okay, a divine sentence is not divination. Okay, this is not a spoken sentence. It's the sentence of ordination or the sentence of a law. Looking at the rest of of the word of God with this word sentence, seeing how God defines the word, which is how you should define the things that you find within the word of God. See what God means by the words that he speaks. It's mentioned 11 times in 10 verses. In the very first verse, it shows you the consistency of what it's speaking of, the sentence of judgment, okay? Or this one where it's mentioned twice, it says the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee. Uh, from the sentence which they shall show thee. Okay, so it's a sentence of something, of an ordination. Understanding that the kings of the earth, they are ordained. They are given a divine sentence. And this stays consistent throughout the entirety of Scripture. Looking at Romans chapter 13, verse 1 now. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. They, they don't have workings of divinations. No, they are ordained of God. They have a divine sentence upon them. So much so that in the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, after the catching away of the body of Christ, Revelation chapter 17, verse 17, it speaks of, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, the kings here, and to agree to give their kingdom, given the context, unto the beast, until the word of the words of God shall be fulfilled. Okay, God has put in their hearts. Okay, there's a certain sentence that's put upon the kings of the earth, a certain ordinance. Okay, as it would be, they 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 are ordained of God. They are put into a position for a reason. Okay, and this is the divine sentence, which is in the lips of the king. Okay, and. There's plenty of scriptures that go on to back this. Ecclesiastes 8.4, uh, you have the, the matter in um, uh, that we're looking at right here, and Romans 13 talks about the ordinations of God. Uh, you have examples such as uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar, he was called the, the servant of God, but he was an evil, evil man. He was carrying out judgment for God on Israel, um, and the laws that he put forth were evil. They were not for God. You can consider the example when Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were tossed into the fiery furnace by Nebuchadnezzar because they did not want to bow to the image that Nebuchadnezzar had lifted up. Okay, if you're following along so far, please, let's go back and look at the perversion of the New King James Bible. And I would encourage that you 
compare with the Dewey Reams Bible as we go through the rest of these passages to show that divination is condemned within all of Scripture. And so the New King James Bible, it's not the Word of God. It's even corrupted compared to itself. It does not stay consistent, and it's lying straight to the reader's face, acting like divination is a good thing right here. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 14, within the New King James Bible, condemns divination. And the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, a worthless thing, and the deceit of their heart. Okay, Divination is considered a worthless thing within the New King James Bible as well as the King James Bible, divination is condemned. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 23, Therefore you shall no longer envision futility, nor practice divination. You shouldn't practice divination, for I will deliver my people out of the hand, out of your hand, excuse me, out of your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. You should not practice divination. Okay? Pretty plain and simple. You might say, oh, well, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, those are after Proverbs. Sure, but let's go to Deuteronomy now. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 14, within the New King James Bible, for these nations which you will dispose us, listed to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God have not appointed such for you. But yet they want to pretend that it is appointed of them. And they'll say in Proverbs 16.10 that divination is on the lips of a king. This is a lie straight from the devil. And, of course, this is one of the devil's perversions of the word of God. Remember the devil's very first trick in the Garden of Eden. Yea, hath God said, trying to corrupt the words of God and change it, tweak it just slightly ever so much so that he can deceive man. <clears throat> What's interesting is coming back and looking at the New King James Bible, when we get back to the King James, you'll see here in Deuteronomy 18, verse 10, There shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his sons or daughters to pass through the fire, or one that practiseth witchcraft or soothsayer, or one that interprets omens or a sorcerer. <laughs> well, they took out the word divination here. The King James Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his sons, his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. And the same verse that condemned the new King James within itself. For these nations which thou shalt possess, thou shalt possessest hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do, have not suffered so to do. Now, just within itself, we can understand, okay, that the New King James Bible is corrupted. It's following headlong in the same lines of the Dewey Reams Bible, a Catholic Bible. It is not a enhancement of the King James Bible. The King James Bible stands alone on its own self and is far above all the other modern perversions. These other modern perversions of the Word of God are just that. They're perverted. They corrupt themselves. They lie straight to your face. I got other videos here on the channel that you can refer to on this matter, but I just wanted to show this thing that's lying straight to our faces, and those that use a New King James Bible, you are following after something that is condemned by God within your own Bible, the New King James Bible. Thank you for watching. I hope this message was a blessing and will help you, those of you that have family members, friends, co-workers that are using the New King James Bible or Dewey Reams, God forbid, um, and you can show that the King James Bible is perfect and pure while their Bible is corrupted and even condemns its own self. Thank you for watching. God bless.